In the same way, when you're writing an English paper, you need to properly provide a citation for the book and author and page number and so on. Or maybe a psychology paper, you would be creating sourcing in uh, a different type of format. There's a specific format here for blogging that I need you to follow. Now, here we are, module two, the book introduction blog post. And I'm asking you to look at these different ideas, explain, do some research. But I say right here, include three different and specific references to the module two, two content material. All right, so what I wanna do is show you how to do that and properly source it. So we're in assignments for module two, so let's just pop back pop back up here to the content area. And here at the beginning, I suggest as you go through the content material, you might want to make notes whether in a certain video there's a phrase that intrigues you, or some modules have articles. You might want to make notes about what content material you will ultimately put into your blog post. So say, for example, there's a video here, what is photojournalism? where I'm explaining the answer to that question. So I have a, a document uh, prepared here. And so let's just uh, go, I'm here in Blogger. I have a, a new blog post going. And so I'm just going to paste in, I have some text right here. So I say, in his video, what is photojournalism? Professor Nordell makes the point that and then you'd use quotation marks and write out a quote from the video. Now, just for this example, I pasted this in from a Word document. And sometimes you might want to write your blog post in Word and then take the words and, and um, paste them into Blogger. However, whenever you paste in text, you want to select it, click on this, and there's this little icon here that clears the formatting. So you want to clear out any formatting you may have. And also, in this case, uh, the name of the video is What is Photojournalism? So I want to put that in italics. Now, when I'm back here in the content, I want to link to this video. So the, uh, all the videos are on YouTube. So if I click the title right here, it opens in YouTube. And then I feel it's best to get the, the link right there to the video. I'll come back to my blogger. I have this text selected. I can put in a link right here. So the text to display right there is what is photojournalism. I'm going to paste in the link right here. And then this is just super important to click open in a new window. Please, please, please make sure you do that to click on open in a new window and then do apply. And then as I mentioned, you would type in your quote right here. So there's one module content source. There's another one where it's uh, Zariah. So once again, I wanna make sure if I'm pasting in to come over here and clear out my uh, formatting you know, that'd be closed. I can click to open it. Uh, I would change this into italics. And then as I showed you, I'd want to go back to the content and, you know, go to that video and get the URL and use that. Now, in other modules, there are articles. So let's just uh, pop down here real quick to module three. Go to the content area. And here there's two different areas. There's do photographs change the world? And then this area on cens censorship and control of information. And so there's an article here about censorship of war casualties in the US. So the article's right here and it's by Ted Rawl. So I can click here to get to the article. Let me just get back to my prepared material. Um, so it says Ted Rawl in Censorship and Casualties of War. 
and then I want to add the quote right here. So when I come to, here's the article, and I'm just going to take this first sentence, copy it. So I say, Ten Rawl in the article wonders, and I'm going to paste in that in right there, why is it so easy for political leaders in the U.S. to convince ordinary citizens to support war? Now you may see the way this has come in really big, and if we do a preview, you'll see that the text is really messed up right there. So I'll definitely always, whenever again, whenever you're pasting something in, clear out the formatting. And then, you know, I want to get the, um, you know, here's the link to that article. And, uh, yeah, let me make this uh, italics. And then I can just select that. If you wanted to, you could also select the actual quote, come up, paste in that hyperlink, make sure it opens in a new window. All right. Now, I just realized I want to back up just a little bit. Say with, with module two, I said I want three different and specific references. So if I mention Zariah, and then I mention Professor Nordell's video, and I mention another quote from Professor Nordell's video, what is photojournalism, that would be three references, but they wouldn't be different. So, say with Module 2, I would want to grab another quote from one of the other videos in Module 2. And with, with this right here, I just wanted to show you what it's like to uh, bring in an, an article. Now, what if you did some research on the topic of what is photojournalism? So, here, let me just close some of this stuff here to have this a little more orderly and organized. And you did your search, what is photojournalism? You came up here with what is photojournalism? And you're like, wow, this is such a great definition right here. Photojournalism is a process of storytelling using the medium of photography as your main storytelling device. Now, if you just copy that and you just paste that into your blog post, when I read that, I'm going to know that came from somewhere. Um, and so you need to make sure that you uh, credit it properly. Also, you can see the way that text came in really large. First thing to do would be to take care of the codes. But when I look at this article on the web, it's from Icon Photography School. The article is, whoop, is called, What is Photojournalism? And so once again, I have this prepared in advance. So when you find material on the web, you need to give it a proper introduction as well. I was going to clear my codes. So Icon Photography School in the blog post, What is Photojournalism? Make it italics, come up, get my URL. Put it in there, open link in a new window, just like when you're submitting a hyperlink in Blackboard. Um, so answers a question like this, pop in those quotation marks. So that's an example of doing some research on the web, that with certain modules, I'll be asking you to include module content material, but also doing your research on the web. All right. Now, what about where there's a case where um, you've read an article on the web, and instead of just quoting it, you've paraphrased it. And, and that's that's really great thing. It, it takes skill and time. But this is a case where I just wrote this. I, I found an article about uh, Daguerre, uh, who in, sort of invented what's considered the first type of photography. Um, but I found that on an article um, written by Malcolm Daniel, called uh, The Daguerrean Age in France, 1839 to 1855. So even though um, I'm paraphrasing, I still need to indicate where I got the material from. 
So I'm not going to put this phrase in quotation marks right here, but um, I am, oops, that should be like this, but I do need to um, put in a link to the source of where I got that information to paraphrase. So unless you just happen to know that all this information about Daguerre, you, anytime you have information from the web where it's new material that you've learned, even if you paraphrase, you need to put in, you need to properly source it like that. Likewise, there might be a time where you um, will do some research later in the course about different kinds of um, photographic processes. And one of them is called the wet plate collodion process. Um, and it's very detailed. It said the process involved adding soluble iodide to a solution of collodion, cellulose nitrate, and coating. Don't try to spend your time trying to paraphrase this. If you want to talk about a specific technology, just, you know, copy what you need, bring it back to your blogger, paste it in. Now look at this. Again, we can see this text is huge. Let's just do a preview. And you can see that it's, that again, it's much bigger because I pasted it from the web. So please, 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 so your blog looks nice and slick and even, come back over here. Let me close this. You know, there's a little bubble dots right here, clear formatting. And then you would want to, um, once again, I already have this prepared. But the wet clay, wet plate clothing process is as detailed by the editors of Encyclopedia. Wikipedia Britannica, the process. So I'd want to, um, all right, I think you probably are getting the point right now. Um, so there is uh, an overview of properly sourcing material, of adding material from the content area to provide context for what you're doing, as well as doing research on the web and properly sourcing it.